Hi everyone, this is, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this week's lab, which is on paper chromatography. So this is a, a purely technical lab. It's a lab on how to use this method to separate out uh, a mixture. Okay. So in this case, we're going to do something called paper chromatography. Uh, and the idea is the following. Chromatography is basically a technique uh, that uh, utilizes the interaction of a sample with something called a stationary phase and a mobile phase and depending on which <clears throat> phase that sample is more attracted to uh, that allows the separation of different components of that sample so uh, an example is shown in this picture let's say I put a sample here that contains you know a sample of ink for example that contains uh, different components uh, of dyes for example yellow pink and blue and um, if I put it on this piece of paper and I select the correct solvent, in this case water, for example, if I leave that paper in the in the solvent, the solvent will slowly rise up. When it rises up, different dyes, the different dyes will be attracted differently to the water, which is the mobile face in this case because it's moving. And as a result, uh, it will be pulled up by that water depending on how much attraction that dye feels towards the water and this is electrostatic attraction this is polar polar uh, polar substance attraction so in this case we can see that the yellow dye is attracted the least and so it doesn't go up as much the blue dye is attracted the most to water so it goes up the most so in a in a paper chromatography system that the one that you'll be working on today the mobile phase is your solvent system okay it might be water we're going to use something else for the solvent the stationary phase is your paper that's the part that doesn't move and uh, it so basically how these samples are attracted to both paper and the solvent is what determines their separation okay now this is a powerful method because it's not uncommon that once you separate let's say you're interested in these three dyes right once you separate them out you can just cut out that piece that contains the dye, dissolve the paper away, and then analyze the component of the dye. You can do other experiments with it to figure out maybe the molar mass of the dye and other characteristics of that dye. Okay? That's really the reason you do chromatography is you're able to separate out things into their pure form or as pure as, as you can with this particular system and then study them individually. You'll do quite a bit of this in organic chemistry, as well as biochemistry. Organic and biochemistry, the system you use to do your separation might not be the paper system, but what we call a column system, okay? A column is basically just something that looks like this, okay? It's usually a plastic container of some sort. You fill it up with a uh, some filler, in this case, uh, it could be beads, it could be uh, some other thing, some kind of a... Uh, a uh, you know powder or whatnot that's been dissolved so you fill it out with silica that's another one that people often use you fill it up with that um, uh, stationary face which is your beads there that part doesn't move and then what you do is you run through some solvent right to wet it okay and then you add your sample here's the red thing is the sample for example and then you add more solvent and by gravity the solvent now it's gonna drip down into this container right just the same way as the paper now you imagine it's sort of the paper but it's flipped upside down now the way it moves is it moves down because of gravity as the solvent moves down the different components of that sample is going to be separated again based on their attraction to the mobile phase which is a solvent and the stationary phase which is your beats in this case okay so like in this particular sample you have two different components red and blue the red is going to be more attracted to solvent so it's going to come out first and then the blue is attracted less to the solvent more attracted to the beads so it's going to spend more time with the beads so it's going to come out later okay so then you can as a result separate these two sample and then you can analyze them independently of each other. Now one of the things that we can use often to identify what spot we have in a paper chromatography experiment is something called a retention factor. Retention factor or RF is basically uh, a value that you calculate by dividing the distance that the spot travels 
by the distance that the solvent travels. So let's say I want to calculate the RF for this yellow spot. What I would do is I would measure from the starting point, okay, the starting point was where I put, originally put the sample. I'm going to measure from the starting point to the center of that spot, okay? So you see that I circle it and I put a dot right the center. I'm going to measure that distance, that I will call D. And then I'm going to measure another distance, which is the starting point all the way to where the water or the solvent ends, okay? That's called the solvent front line, which has the symbol F. If I take D divided by F, I get my RF. Column chromatography, uh, we often have an analogous quantity that measures retention, which is called retention time in this case. So the longer something takes, you know, that has a different retention time compared to something that takes less time to come out of the column. So it's sort of same idea like the retention factor, RF, in paper chromatography. You're trying to determine basically the identity of these spots or these samples based on uh, the time they spend either on the paper or in the column.